Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. If you've ever slurped down a slushy or eaten your ice cream a little too quickly, you might have experienced it. You know, sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia, huh? better known as huh? oh, brain <laughs> freeze. brain freeze or an ice cream <laughs> headache. Yeah, a brain freeze happens when cold food touches a group of nerves in the back of the palate. These are the same nerves that are related to cluster and migraine headaches. Joining us on the phone to discuss headaches, ice cream, and others from the Mayo <laughs> Clinic in Arizona is neurologist Dr. Amal Starling. Dr. Starling, welcome to the program. Good to have you. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me on to talk about headache, which affects so many people. So it's a very important topic that we should all be talking about. So well, who hasn't had an ice cream headache? You know, based okay. on studies, I think the majority of people have had an ice cream headache at some point or another. Is it is it wrong to laugh at your children when they're really little and they have a brain freeze? <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty comical, although it's very painful. It it is very painful, but it only lasts for seconds. So I think after a moment of laughter, it's a good idea to just let them know that trigger avoidance is something we can do by slowing down uh, the consumption of cold products such as ice cream and slushies. How do you do that? Yeah, no, that's impossible. (laughs) So what, what is really happening? Yeah, so, you know, this is very similar to when it's really cold outside and your hands are cold and you run them underneath some warm or hot water. It'll be an immediate onset of pain uh, before you feel that warmth. And so that's related to actually vascular reactivity. So what's happening um, is that there is a reduction of the blood flow or vasoconstriction uh, that occurs and then a vasodilation or enlargement of the blood vessels that occurs. And there are what we call nociceptors or the pain-sensitive structures that are in the vessel walls. And so when the blood vessels change sizes, it activates those pain receptors. And we think that the same thing is happening uh, when someone has a rapid ingestion of anything cold. It also can occur with a rapid inhalation of cold air, um, such as someone who's ice skating or if someone is surfing um, in cold weather. There have been case reports of that as well. And so we suspect that what occurs is that there is a rapid constriction and then expansion of the blood vessels that are in the palate, um, so the hard top part of the mouth as well as the back of the throat, and then that results in a headache. Now, some people may ask, well, why doesn't it just cause pain in the mouth? Why does it actually cause a headache? And this is an example of what we call referred pain. So a lot, of time, a lot of times people hear that if your left arm is hurting, think that you might be having a heart attack. And that's referred pain as well because the nerves innervate the left arm and the heart. Um, they go to the similar part of the brain. The brain can't tell the difference about what is causing the pain. And the same thing happens in the ice cream headache is that that goes to the same part of the brain where headache disorders are generated and head pain is generated. And so the manifestation is headache rather than palate pain. You know, that's the best explanation I've ever heard, uh, (laughs) Dr. Starling. But uh, didn't it take a long time to figure this out? It seems to me like for years people would uh, uh, talk about ice cream uh, headache, and uh, the answer was we don't know what causes it. Yeah, you know, I feel like that is probably the pattern that has existed in a lot of headache disorders. So not just ice cream headache, but the same thing with migraine um, and cluster headache is that people didn't really understand it. And so they thought, I don't know what it is. Don't worry about it. It's just a headache. You'll get over it. And it's true in cold stimulus headache or an ice cream headache. It just lasts for a few seconds. It's very benign. It doesn't cause significant disability except for the inability to consume ice cream quickly. Um, But for the other headache disorders, this has definitely been an impairment um, in our ability to move the science forward because of a lack of funding and a lack of interest. I just, ha- I just have to ask a question. I'm thrilled that you're joining us because I want to know if putting your tongue on the top of your mouth when you have a brain freeze or an ice cream headache, if that really helps to make the ice cream headache go away, or is it just giving you something nearly impossible to do until it just naturally goes away? You know, it, it, we don't have a study that gives us definitive evidence as to your uh, the question, uh, the answer to your question. However, if this is related to a rapid change in temperature, which results in a rapid change in blood vessel size, 
If you can use something like your tongue or your thumb uh, to uh, touch and potentially warm up or stabilize the temperature um, of uh, your palate, perhaps that does actually reduce the rapid changes in vessel change, uh, vessel size. Well, interesting. Is the would you say that the or do you know the pain from an ice cream headache? Is it similar to a migraine, or, or is it similar to any other kind of headache that we know about? Yeah, it's similar in the sense that it is activating a similar part of the brain. So the trigeminal nucleus caudalis is a part in the brain. Oh, that stem. part. Yeah. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> what is that again? There's, there's a part that's in the brain stem that's called the trigeminal nucleus caudalis. And the trigeminal nucleus caudalis is an essential part of the brain for many headache disorders, um, including ice cream headache, as well as more common migraine, as well as cluster headache and the other headache disorders that people can experience. Wow, so everybody's got one of those. And everybody's got one of those. Unfortunately, some people, their trigeminal nucleus caudalis is more prone to having migraine attacks based on genetics. And I wish that a migraine only lasts as long as brain freeze. I know, I know. Unfortunately, so many people um, in the U.S. and globally suffer from migraine attacks. And migraine is a neurologic disease, which can be very debilitating. So what so, are, yeah, go ahead, Dr. Sharks. As long as uh, we brought up the uh, subject of migraines, I understand that there are some new medications coming out that are supposed to be very good for migraine sufferers. Yes, definitely. So it is a, it's going to revolutionize the way that we practice headache medicine, I suspect, um, so as we've learned more about the science of migraine, we've identified this neuropeptide, um, which is called calcitonin gene-related peptide, and we call that CGRP. And CGRP is elevated during a migraine attack. It is also relieved or reduced when a migraine attack is relieved with as-needed medications such as sumatriptan. In addition, in people who have more severe migraine disease, they have chronic migraine, which is defined as having greater than 15 headache days per month. And in those individuals, they persistently have an elevated amount of CGRP or that neuropeptide in their system. And so that led to drug discovery to determine how can we modulate the CGRP system to benefit people with migraine, the neurologic disease. And so it has led to the development of these monoclonal antibodies, which are not actually affecting the immune system. The monoclonal antibody is just a delivery system um, that then actually consumes or blocks and inactivates either the molecule or the receptor, depending on which drug we're talking about. Well, I'm and glad you understand how it works. You know, <laughs> when are these drugs going to be available? I'm sure there are a lot of migraine sufferers who uh, who would like to know. Definitely. So first of all, as far as knowing how it works, it, it's the best, you know, people people are more compliant when they understand how a medication works. And the best way I can describe it is the old school arcade game of Pac-Man. <laughs> and you think of the medication as Pac-Man and the dots are CGRP and CGRP receptors. And the medication is going to eat up all those dots, and it's going to reduce the frequency and severity of migraine attacks. Wow, wow perfect. We, yeah, we need to have you back to talk a little bit more about this. I would be happy to do so. And as far as when they'll be available, I wish that I had the answer to that. What I can tell you um, is that the uh, studies that have been completed, there's four different companies that have been uh, completing uh, their Phase three clinical trials. Um, two of the companies have completed their phase three, some of their phase three clinical trials, and one of the companies has submitted for FDA approval. Um, and so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it should be available soon. Uh, the good news is every single one of the studies have been positive, and so it's very consistently um, effective in people who have both episodic migraine as well as chronic migraine. Well, hopefully those medications will be available soon. Dr. Amal Starling, thanks so much for being with us. You're very, very welcome. Thank you for having me on.